Praise the Lord, Great Abantha. Yes, it was a happy day when Jesus came and washed my sins away. Thank you, young people. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen, amen. Giving all honor and praises to God, for he is worthy of all praises. To Pastor Redden, I say thank you for allowing me to grace your pulpit. To our First Lady, Reverend Gloria Redden. To Presiding Elder Moore and Sister Moore, Amen. Sister Bird, officers, members, and friends. I'd like to also say thank you, Sister Cynthia. <laughs> thank you. And to our young people, I really do thank God for you. For you for being at home, playing video games or whatever it is that the young people do. Amen, Brandon? <laughs> Amen, amen, he gonna get me for that one. But I thank the parents and the guardians also because these are children and they cannot come by themselves. So we say thank you to the parents or whoever's in charge of these children, we say thank you for sharing your little gifts with us, this, your talents rather, with us this morning. I also like to say a uh, special thanks to Two people, well, more than two, but I'll just say two people that I met down at Westminster who have encouraged me, prayed with me, and just basically just encouraged me along the way. Uh, Sister Gloria Irvin and Sister Lorraine Glover. We call her Lele. I just want to say thank you uh, this morning for all of your encouragements and my family that continuously stand with me. I don't see my son James here this morning, but I'm sure he's down at board here with, with his father who is the pastor at board here. So we say thank you. Let us pray. I God and the Father, I come now to say thank you. I thank you, God, for another day that you kept your child. Oh God, I ask you to hide her behind the cross so that your waiting children would not even see her, but only hear your words. Oh God, I pray right now that if I'm up too high, bring me down some. And if I'm out too far, bring me in, oh God. If I'm in too close, push me in. But whatever you do, oh God, I just ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. amen and amen. Text is taken from Genesis, the 34th chapter. Well, it's my text is taken really from Genesis, the 34th chapter, the first 26 verses. But now you know I'm not going to stand up here and read all of that. <laughs> I'm only going to read the first four verses. Amen. 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 One day, Deanna, Leah's daughter, went to visit some of the young women who lived in the area. But when the local priest Shaham, son of Hamah, the Hivite, saw her, he took her and raped her. But Shechem's love for Deanna was strong, and he tried to win her affection. He even spoke to her father about it. Get this girl for me, he demanded. I want to marry her. Amen. I trust I have your prayers and your amen. I don't have to stay up here all day, all night, and half of next week to say what thus says the Lord. Amen. I was told back in the Institute, back in New York, the Ministry Institute, that when you get up to speak, the Holy Spirit is there, you speak as long as the Spirit is there. But when the Spirit leaves, please have enough of sense to sit down. <laughs> so pray for me that when the Spirit leaves, I will sit down. I will know when to land this plane. Amen? Amen. So it's just going to be a few minutes, so stay with me. My title 
I gave this this morning is off to see the world. Off to see the world. Dinah, the daughter of Jacob and Leah, she was a member of a family under covenant blessings. But she was young and daring. She wanted to see how the women in the rest of the world live. In other words, she wanted to see the bright lights. She wanted to see what they were doing there. I can hear in my mind's eyes, I want to go and see the bright lights of New York City. They tell me it's a big city. And it's so big that they had to name it twice. <laughs> New York, New York. First and last name. It's a city where it seems no one ever goes to sleep. You can find someone always walking up and down the streets. Or maybe she wanted to go see the bright lights of Las Vegas, known by, by its name Sin City. Or just maybe she wanted to go to, go to Uptown Charlotte to go see the clubs or, or to one or two of the clubs just to see what is really happening at Club Royale. Hello, somebody. <laughs> All right, I've never been there, but I keep hearing about this Club Royale. You see, nothing is happening down in Steel Creek where I live. Down in the woods, my kids say, this, my son says, there's nothing down here but squirrels and rabbits and possums and whatever else. We live on a street where there is one light, one street light. Hurricane came by a few days ago and put that one out. <laughs> so nothing is going on down in Steel Creek. Help me somebody. I just want to go and see how the women in the other part of the world live. Scripture tells us that Diana went to the annual Canaanite festival of nature worship, even though this was forbidden by the Israelites. They have so young and naive roamed around the festival in amazement. No doubt by the town girls' garment, that the things that they were wearing there, she had never seen before. But looking at them and they're staring and staring in amazement. The scripture tells us that the local prince Shaham saw her. Saw her, mean, saw her means that he lusted after her. The text in Genesis 34, 2 says that he immediately offered her. He, he, he immediately offended her. He took her and he raped her. And then he had the nerve to try to win her affection. But his lust had already done its damage. He even spoke to her father about it. Get this girl for me, he demanded. I want to marry her. I don't know about you or how you may be thinking right now. But I think brother man is a day late and a dollar short. Why didn't he ask for her hand in marriage before? He violated her. Now he wants to do the right thing. I find something wrong with this picture. But word soon reached her father, her father Jacob, that his daughter had been defiled. Jacob's sons was out in the field herding the cattle, so he did nothing until they returned. Meanwhile, Hamar, she has father, came, Shechem's father, came out to discuss the matter with Jacob. Just as he arrived, Jacob's sons was coming in from the field. They were furious their sister had been raped. Shechem had done a disgraceful thing against Jacob's family, a thing that should have never been done. But accordingly to Hebrews law in Deuteronomy 22, 28 and 29, the payment for rape, if a man is caught in the act of raping a young woman who is not engaged, he must pay 50 pences of silver to the father. Then he must marry her and never be allowed to divorce her. But in the meantime, her brothers pretended to accept the usual payment while they plotted their revenge. 
Cinnamon and Levi's, two, two of a kind, two men of violence, were the main culprits and earned, who had earned Jacob's curse. When he was dying, these two men's now was ready to get it on. You, you violated my sister, and it's over for you. Your entire family, not only is it over for you, but we are going to hurt, we're going to mess up your entire family. You mess with the wrong person just right now. You mess with the wrong family. We are not told anymore about Dehab after she was rescued from Shaham's house while her brothers killed all the men in the town. Genesis 34 and 25, 26. So you see, young people, this young, daring, naive girl had let curiosity lead her into disaster. And a little escapade caused suffering and death to many. As I close, I would say to the young as well as the old, there is a Deanna in all of us, suspicious that God is withholding fun, happiness from us. We go to the parties, either in our heads or in, our, or in actual fact, just to see what the world has to offer. And if it's really as bad as some narrow-minded Christians say it is, such curiosity ends up bringing trouble to everyone and disgrace to God. I know what it is to want to see another part of the world. I want to be a part of the in crowd. I know what it is, young people. I haven't been this age all year. Oh yeah, oh not all yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've been to say all yeah. <laughs> help me, Holy Ghost, help me, Holy Ghost. Right. Help me, Holy Ghost. But I haven't been this age all the time. I know what it is to be young and to want to go out and to see. But then I say to you, listen to your parents. And our parents can see in their mind's eye trouble that is lurking to devour us. But as young people, we don't always see or understand it. Right. I came from a home of God-fearing parents. To me, they was unnecessarily strict. We went to church, we went to school, and played in the front yard while our parents sat on the front porch and watched. That's fine. That didn't bother us, or should I say me. But as time passed on, our father died. And it seemed that mother, my mother got stricken. Why? If somebody says, why, because what? I don't know. But it seemed like she just kept us closer and closer. But I do know I was now a teenager. And yes, I wanted to go to the parties and etc. But mama said no. Good girls don't go to places like that. I didn't understand that, and that really made me want to go. I had a cousin that lived down the road, and she was allowed to go to all of the parties and whatnot, and I had some friends, and they all had, was able to go. But when it came to me, and I'm a young teenager now, I want to go. My mother said, no, they called me sister. No, sister, you're not going. So we plotted together. I, I could always go up to my cousin's house, and that was about as far as I could go if it wasn't church school and <laughs> all right, the front yard. So there was something happening down on Highway 21. And I'm sure you know where Highway 21 is. It runs up north and south. But anyway, we decided, um, let's get, I'm going to get dressed at your house, and we're going to go. Now, I've been told not to go. It's a little place on Highway 21. It was a juke junk there. All of the kids from junior high and high school was there. So we, I went. I went to my cousin's house. Yes, I sneaked out and went to my cousin's house. Got dressed. Down Highway 21, we went. 
in there. I wasn't really dancing because I hadn't been anywhere. I didn't know how to dance. But I was doing what I saw the rest of them do, just looking around and whatever it is. All of a sudden, somebody said, who's that woman out there in that yard with that baseball bat? <laughs> and I'm nosy, you know, I'm going to look, baseball bat. So my cousin said, Liz, that's Cousin Beulah out there. <laughs> so, oh, Lord, it's on now. <laughs> so she asked the man that was running the place to let me go out the back door, because there's cars and whatnot there. I could go out the back door, sneak behind the car, but I still got to go down Highway 21. Naked on up, you know, uh, to my cousin's house, change my clothes. I don't know. Mama already saw me, so I don't know why I was doing that. But anyway, we had a cousin that wasn't too right, and he was bigger than bigger than bigger, but he was light on his feet. As I went around those cars and down Highway 21, he said, Cut and Beulah, I'll catch it for you. <laughs> and I was gone down the highway, and he was right on me. That was worse than any whipping I ever had. But he didn't catch me. I kept on past home. I went back up to my other cousin's house. Her mother said, oh, no, Liz, you can't come in here. I ain't come. Don't bring that in here. You go on home and face it. So I did. I had no other choice but to go home and to face it. Um, it really wasn't a baseball bat. It was a big stick. <laughs> you know, she didn't have a baseball bat but it was a big stick. And that was, I only got, as I can remember, about three, I would say, beating whippings, you know, in my life. I'm sure I probably got a little more, but I only remember three good ones. <laughs> three good ones, and this last one topped it. I remember my first whipping was my sister Janice went in my mother's chocolate candy and ate half of it up, used to sell candy back in the day. And I got the beating because I was the oldest. My mother had to go somewhere that I was supposed to see after the younger one. Well, I got the beating because she ate the candy. I didn't eat any of it, but she ate it. But I got the beating. My second beating, I, whipping, I shouldn't say beating, but whipping I got was I was always a scaredy cat. I wouldn't fight. I would run in a minute. And I'm still a scaredy cat. I, I really am. I do anything to keep from fighting. I, I don't like fights and arguments. I, 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 I'm, I get in the wind in a minute. I remember my sisters and brothers, little ones used to take up from me. And I would run home crying. My mother would say, now look, sister, I don't want you out here fighting, but you got to learn how to stand up for yourself. You cannot run. You can't. You grow up, you run there, you're going to be running, running, running. Well, I guess I didn't stroke in because I'm still running. Uh, you know, she said, but if you come home running one more time, I'm going to beat you. So then I had to face this girl that always used to jump on me every afternoon, whether I gave her my lunch or whatever I gave her. I'm telling you, they, they were, but we didn't call them bullies then, but I don't know what we call them. But we have bullies now. So I say to you young people, don't give up your lunch or your this or that because they're going to still come back after as soon as they eat your lunch or whatever it is you give them. They not, they'll say, I'll be your friend, but they're not. As soon as they eat it, you give them whatever they want, they're going to gonna come back the next day. It's going to be the same thing. So it's best to stand up to them, let your parents know, your teacher, let somebody know what's going on. So I stood up to this girl. And we had our fight, and it was on, and, 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 and they always say a, a scary person will get the best of you. And I, I was afraid. I really didn't know what I was doing. But I got the best of her. All right. And because, see, I, well, first of all, we, we was coming, walking from school back then, and you had to get up the hill, and then one, we lived down the hill on the other side. So once I got up, if I could make it up the hill, then it was easy going down the there hill. So I go running home that day, but a few minutes later, her grandmother brought her to the house and showed my mother what I did to her, and I still got a beaten. <laughs> she said, "Gal, I didn't tell you to fight like that. I want you to take up for yourself. Don't do this, but you could have, you know, don't, don't do that. So that was that. And like I said, in my last 
uh, one was what I call myself sneaking out of the house. That was the worst. And I was what you would call a goody two-shoe. I, I really wasn't into a lot of uh, uh, different little things. But yes, I did go out that particular time. And I guess uh, I've heard people say, well, I went no, because I was curious. But when I look back over my life and I think things over, all I can say is, thank you, Lord. I thank God for his goodness and his mercy. Because when I look back even at my cousin and some of their so-called friends, when I look at their lives now, when I look at their lives now, some are dead and gone. And some are summer, 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 summer. <laughs> but I thank God for my mother, for my parents. Right. Sometimes we think when our parents, our guardians, are telling us don't do this, don't do the other, we think they're the meanest person in the world. But down the line, down the road, we understand what it was they were trying to keep us from and what they want us to be. We often hear people say, well, I'm going. I'm curious. And I heard somebody else say, well, curiosity killed a cat. Somebody else say, well, and you know, satisfaction brought him back. <laughs> Maybe satisfaction did bring him back, but how did he bring him back? What was the outcome? What was the damage of your curiosity wanting to get out there and see and do all of these things? So I say to you today, listen to your parents. Yes, listen to your parents. We do understand that you want to go places, but as an adult, we know that Satan is lurking to and fro, seeing whom he may devour. We thank God for you children here, this young people this morning. Amen. We Amen. truly thank God for you and for your parents for bringing you here. I know some of you may not want to be here this morning, but mama, dad, aunt, uncle, grandmama, or somebody said, where are you going? <laughs> you going. So we thank God for you this morning. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for these, your children. We ask your blessings upon them, O oh God, as they continue to go to school, as they continue to go out to play. Bless them, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It may be someone here this morning that's standing in need of prayer. We invite you to come to the altar and give it all to Jesus. Don't try to fight your battle. I think I heard the young people singing a song this morning. Let Jesus take the wheel. Was that they were singing that early on? Yes. If you want to be happy, let Jesus take the wheel. Won't you come? Young people, please come. It's God's grace and mercy. Thank you. Yes. Some of you I know are facing some bullies out there. Peer pressure. You want to be in the in crowd. I know what it is to want to be in the in crowd as they call it. Mama, daddy, grandmama, aunts, stepmama, whomever is trying to teach you. But it's hard. Your it's only God's grace and mercy. Yes. It's going to take you through. And the only reason you hear this 
this morning is because of God's grace and mercy. So we want to thank you this morning, God. And praise you too, oh God. Amen. 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 Amen.